for Take Three Productions. I am Chris Domer. Here with me today, I've got my wonderful engineer, Chris Clark, as well as a couple of guests here. I've got Malcolm Lay down below me, and I've got Mark Boric to the side of me. Gentlemen, welcome to your first reaction on Take Three. How do you guys feel? I'm feeling great. Thanks uh, for having us. Awesome. And obviously, we're, we're glad to have you guys here. You know, because... We're, we're all kind of geeks, I would certainly say, here. You know, yeah. we have Clark, who's a bit more of a DC kind of geek. Uh, Mark, you're more with me in terms of being like a big-time Star Wars geek. And Malcolm, you've actually got a little bit of everything in there. Plus, you live yeah. in New Zealand. So you should know like everything about Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah, the bit's theory anyway. <laughs> awesome. Well, to be fair, today on the Movie Trivia Schmodown, we are expecting that same thing out of two fantastic competitors, Emma Fife and Jason Inman, in a one-on-one -on -one match. The winner of this match partakes in a fatal four-way to take on Hector Navarro at the Schmodown Spectacular. I don't know how this is going to go. Now, I'll, I'll quick go around, around the table. Mm -hmm. You know, hashtag who you got. Uh, Malcolm, what do you got? Um, I mean, this was a hard one for me. I mean, like, my heart says Jason Inman's going to win, but then there's also a part of me that thinks that Emma Five could easily sh uh, come to play and s snake it from him. So, going up Emma on this. That's that. That is certainly a possibility because you know Inman has been pretty consistent in the inner geekdom. But Fife is almost a superstar in the air yeah. geekdom. Mark, do you agree with that, or do you think uh, it's a little more one-sided than you think? Um, I might have to go a little more one-sided. It's just like they, I'm really hoping that this is Jason Edmonds' real time to sign in inner geekdom. He's had a, a little bit of an unfortunate run, but and I also can't vote for him as biased. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot you support you support those morons in the den. Oh. So, you know, but uh, well, here's the thing though. You also have another den supporter, Chris Clark. Yes. Because Robert Meyer Burnett, mm -hmm. for some reason, is still part of that cult. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. are you going to go against Miss Biased, or are you actually going to be for her in this match? That's that's the real question now, Clark. Well, look, look, Chris. Jason Inman, and I explained this on actually the summit when we talk about our predictions. Jason Inman beat Robert Meyer Burnett. Technically, in that five way, he beat Robert Meyer Burnett. And anybody who can beat Robert Meyer Burnett can win and may be a champion because he is the best. I will contend that to the day I die. I know everybody's looking at me and face palming, but he beat Robert Meyer Burnett. Emma, Emma is just somebody standing in Jason Inman's way, but knowing my luck, Emma might win. So I don't know. I am rooting for Jason. So let's rock this sucker to the end of time. The Chris Clark curse is still real, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, let's watch a match. Let's watch what I'm sure is going to be a great match. Here we are, guys. We're going to click play in five, four, three, two, one, play. For the record, I love this new Collider intro. It's beautiful and it's slick. Oh, From the oh. desk of the commission. Hey there, Schmodown fans. It's Thad Williams, your interim commissioner. I hope everyone enjoyed the tournament finals matches last week. Oh, Just I know, to I did. update all of you on some happenings uh. around the league. The contracts have been signed, and I'm happy to announce a few I'm updates happy to know the that match Harlop schedule. Is defend his belt As you know, new this is at the end of the week. year. The winner of today's uh, match will compete in we're Friday's keeping the same tag match champs, I know against that. Koi Jandrew, Jay Washington, and Rachel Cushing. The winner of Friday's match will try to take on the belt from Hector Navarro at the Spectacular. And Ooh. as I mentioned last week on Inside Schmodown, next week we return to regular season matches with a battle that's not so much about wits as it is about witty guesses. Only Stupid Answers is facing the Wild Berries. The winner will get a match oh, wow. at the Spectacular. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. That's not happening. But it should be a fun That'll match. That'll be a fun match to watch Stupid sure. Answers and the Wild Berries airs well, this Tuesday, November 28th. Win that. Also coming up on oh, yeah. Friday, December 1st, Ooh. DC Movie News is entering the ring against Top That, the team formerly known as Team IGN. After declining a spot in the team tournament, we've all been waiting to see what the top that heavy hitters would do next. Hurt. Now you have your chance to find out next Friday against Mike Kalinowski and Adam Gertler. 
On December 5th, Mark Bernardin returns to competition to face newcomer Lon Harris. These two have worked in the same movie news circles for years. I can't wait to see what happens when they square off. And finally, December 8th is the Star Wars Fatal Five Way with Steel Saunders from the Steel Wars podcast, Joseph Scrimshaw from Force, Force Center podcast, Star Wars Explains Alex Damon, Shayna O'Neill, the geek girl diva, and the warrior himself, that Sam Witwer. So awesome. The winner will challenge the pit boss Wait, Ken Natsu hold on, Christian, at the spectacular to say, and Chris the Stellar Star Wars the belt. Podcast. So maybe we have it a bunch <laughs> of hell, fantastic man? matches the next few weeks as we go full steam ahead towards the spectacular. But enough for me. You're here for the inner geekdom qualifier between Emma Fife and Jason Inman. So let's get ready to schmo down. Oh, not bad then. I like how they're making it their own when they say that. That's about to happen in this oh, yeah. fire for Friday's Fatal Four. Android. Absolutely. This is a big match with a lot of ramifications. Jason Inman has been chasing this intergeekdom title for a long time. He's been running. This is what this is where I think he belongs, though he's a great competitor at anything he does here in the Schmodown. This that is his arena, and then we have Emma Fife out to try to prove that she is not just an interviewer. She is a competitor. She's been in teams with the Night Sisters with Joelle Monique, and they've had some bumps in the road, and I think this is a big Night Sisters match. had a lot of potential. So much nerd talent here today, and we didn't even talk about our special guest. Yeah, Maybe the nerd I like Joelle. The nerd, the great. King of yeah. Geeks. Mark Andreco is here, everybody. <laughs> nice to be here, fellas. Nice to be on this side of the table for once. It's a little bit less pressure, isn't it? So, well, I'm, I'm scared I'm going to mess up a question. So I always yell. I always complain over there when somebody messes yes. up something. The so. tails are turned, yes, Mr. Yes, Andreco. But yes. it's good to have you here. You Thanks. know the competition, and you know what it's like to be under pressure on that stage there. So what do you think about Inman Fife going into this match? Well, I think they're they're pretty evenly matched. They're both really great competitors. Um, they both have specific areas of knowledge. They both have deficiencies as well so like i always say shots fired the wheel is the wheel will be the deciding factor because I, I this could be a Says photo finish and i hope it is because those are the most Star exciting question, right it's a great point yeah. because yeah. you look at the wheel for the inner geekdom and you have some inman strengths on there i mean obviously star trek is a wedge on the wheel and then when you look at emma fife and what she brings to the table emma fife like you said might have a deficiency here too as inman might but if you're walking down the street and you see emma fife walking towards you with a broomstick for quidditch turn around and go in the other direction because you're your lunch money is about to get taken. <laughs> and the thing about Emma that's really interesting is because she's the commentator and because she does the post interview. I mean, Golden it's Mike. surprising seeing Mark and, and Draco praising <laughs> Emma Five. Yeah, I mean, she did it to me. The they won't need the most of you. I was going to ask um, you. Now, now I, I, oh. the Lions Den is interesting. They know how to be fair. Let's just we say know that. that yeah. I know you're going to come here and kind of just be a, a non-biased announcer. Malcolm, that was a great job. You, you and Emma do have a, a history over there in the interviews. Yeah, you know, I, you know, the last match that I that I unfortunately lost to a very worthy competitor, Ms. Rachel Cushing. We've Cushing. all been um, losers recently. Uh, she, Emma's, Emma's line of question got under my skin, and I kind of went full heel on her, so I'd like to take the time to uh, apologize for going full heel on her. I should have gone, like, th after the fact, I was like, wow, that was kind of mean. So save your cards and letters. I am a, I am a man who knows my own flaws. Yeah, but you know I'm what? If you're still sending cards instead of hate comments, <laughs> send all the cards you can. Actually, we send cards. That. Send cards and letters. That's um, a big but, man there. So, but I can judge. All yeah, yeah. I think it'll be a really fun match. So. Yeah, absolutely. And both fighters really respect each other a lot. They, they Respectful are people, win, Chris. They, yes, Respectful there is a people mutual respect in that Yes. There certainly is, Ken, and when you talk yeah, about mutual and respect and maybe some there. light trash talking, that's what we expect to hear from both Jason Inman and Emma Fife pregame. Here's a quick look. He's too good for them. Koi, Rachel, and Jay, you all have secured your spot. They've got two champions. Belt. I need my spot. I have been chasing this belt for a year. Last year, I begged Christian Harloff to let me in the first Intergeekdom match ever. He wouldn't do it. He was like, you're in the team match. You need to focus on Scott Mance. He's a ball of tricks. And I, you know what, I held, I handled him. We won our match. I still could have done the Intergeekdom. So this is my shot to get my chance at that belt. I feel pretty comfortable where I am standing, you know, in front of a step repeat interviewing people after matches, but I like to get in there and compete every once in a while and Intergeekdom sort of up my alley. So if you saw last time I played, I got screwed by the wheel. The wheel has been my unlucky heel this year. Every time I face that wheel, it either it, it blesses me like a baby 
or it slaps me like a bitch. And most of the time it slaps me like a bitch. I hate that fucking wheel. The last time that I competed in Inner Geek, Mine's coming out good. I had the first time ever competing in this competition wherein I spun a category on the wheel I was actually good at, and I got a little over eager. Uh, didn't quite listen to the full question, and that kind of threw me for a loop going into the last question of that round, which I should have known. Herbology, it's like a real freaking thing. Nerd stuff is my life. This is my passion. This is what I believe. Seriously, if you were to cut my veins, the Starship <laughs> Enterprise would come out. Seriously, it would. I live and breathe this stuff, and now's the time to show it. Jason Inman, if I hit that Harry Potter category in round two, I am not going to answer questions before I finish hearing the end of them. And I'm going to totally devastate. This time I'm going to get all the points that I need. You know, best of luck to you if you get uh, Star Trek in round two. You're a good man, Jason Inman, and I look forward to doing battle with you today. Emma is a very impressive competitor. You should I'm not, not count her out by any means. I do think this is a 50-50 toss-up. So but hit like Trek. every hero's journey, like <laughs> Kirk versus Khan, like Luke versus Darth Vader, like Indy versus Hitler, I've got to take out the person that's standing in front of me. And Emma, I'm sorry to say, it's you. I'm going to break your wand, and I'm going to send you packing. But don't worry. I'm going to send you along with the sorting hat. Just make sure you say hi oh. to the Dursleys for me. That's a curse. How dare you? <laughs> They don't like the Dursleys. I mean, you see that there? I'm actually really proud of them because you are in a hot pressure situation right now, just trying to get into a fatal four-way. I think that they handled the pre-interviews with class. We will see what happens when we actually get out onto the dance floor. Without further ado, Ken, let's hit the tail of the tape. That's right. One of these fighters will go on to face Rachel Cushing, Jay Washington, and Coy Jandrew. But for right now, we have Jason Emman. His strengths are DC, Marvel. DC and Marvel. He reads a lot of superhero comic books. Also, <laughs> Star Trek. He doesn't just look like Riker. He is Riker in his own mind. He knows a lot about that fandom. And Emma Fife, the Golden Mike, Harry Potter. Just look at her socks. Lord of the Rings. Look at her spells and wizardry. <laughs> and of course, Star Wars. She's a big fan of that. Uh, at that as well. Uh, participating in Star Wars role-playing game shows. Star Wars Rebels. Okay, someone I would love to see in the like at said. one stage for a reason. And little yeah, deficiencies. Let's though. see where they match up. Ken, there's two things that we love to do when we have a special guest at the desk. One is make them buy us lunch. The other yeah. is guess who's going to win here today. You got Fife, you got Inman. I think all things being equal, I think it's going to be a photo finish. I think Inman by two points. He's going wow. with the favorite here today. And without further ado, Ken, Mark, yeah. if you ready guys, to do if, this? Are you guys ready? Is that pink jacket ready? This pink jacket has never not been ready for anything. <laughs> Kuga. Did, did, is that the ghost of Josh Bakuka? Well, then if you guys are ready, the crowd is ready, then it's time <laughs> for the movie <laughs> trivia showdown. An inner geekdom one-on-one -on -one matchup. Three rounds to a finish. All right. Introducing first. Representing the Night Sisters. With a record of zero wins and one defeat. She is the Golden Mike, Emma Fife. Here comes Emma Fife casting a spell of wow. joy over <laughs> Wow, look at that effect. Yeah. By a lot of spells. Spelly Arvis, that's one of them, right? Inside out yeah. of uh, Spelly Arvis. <laughs> I think that's it. You just went full energy. I did. And her opponent. Representing Team Trek. With a record of zero wins and one defeat. He is. Jason Could at least go for some Justin Trek music. Just saying. Oh, he's got the that Sonic. Is a, that, is a, that is a Doctor Who reference. I got it, Mark. Oh, oh this is a Doctor Who reference. Goodness, a Doctor Who reference by Jason Inman. We expected Trek. We expected maybe Star not Doctor Who. <laughs> Coming out of the phone booth hot. Love it, I love it, I love it. All right, Mark, while the fighters get ready, go ahead. Will you all explain some of the rules to us? That's right. Miss Fife and Mr. Inman, you are in an inner geekdom matchup. Like Ken alluded to, the winner of this match here today will compete in the Fatal 4-Way, which is just days away. The winner of that will face Hector Navarro at the Schmodown Spectacular later on this year. In this competition, 
You will hear ten questions in By the way, uh, Mark and Malcolm, the question, please press the block for the answers. The whiteboard. When we <laughs> see who comes out on top. Answer, okay. Show the yeah. The same time you verbalize it into I tend to take round one a little competitive in case you guys uh, tend to well, forget each these things. Worth one so, point, no, no, penalty no worries, no worries. There's no stealing I'm ready. in round one. Jason Inman, you are the favorite. Are you ready to compete? Let's engage. I believe that was a Star Trek <laughs> reference. Emma Fife, are you ready to engage? Ready. So those are legally binding answers. <laughs> it's time. Let's <laughs> get ready to schmodown. <laughs> All right. We will defer to our special guest who asked the first question of round one. The ceremonial first one, but it does count just the same. The first question is in the category of Harry Potter. What is the first name of Harry Potter's father? No, he had a daddy. He did? I have no idea. Thought and he was one of them. Five. <laughs> four, 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 three, I almost forgot it for a quick two, second. James Potter. One. James. James. That is James. That is James. correct. James. James. That is About correct. to say Jonathan, <laughs> damn it. Nothing left. James. Yeah. Great job, Emma. I Thanks, you too, Jason. <laughs> the Lord our Savior, and I would have been wrong. Your next question comes from the world of Marvel. Your Marvel flicks. What? Did Peter Parker originally <laughs> want to be called at the wrestling match in 2002's Spider-Man? Um, damn it. I'm blanking. I remember seeing that movie in the movie theater when I was four years old. Yeah, a lot of tension out there. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pens are down. Emma Fife. I don't think this is right, but he is a spider wearing a mask, so I said the masked spider. Ooh, I would have been intimidated, but that is incorrect, <laughs> incorrect. Jason Inman. Human I'm spider? I'm sure this is incorrect as well. Is it man human spider? spider? Human oh, spider. So the human spider. Oh. Oh. Yes. yes. The human spider. Yeah. Was spider. It was Bruce Campbell that named him, though. Bonus points? Swing and a miss. No. Swing for the bowl and saw is ready. All right, guys. Third question is in the category of DC. DC, oh. what's the character name of Christopher Walken in Batman Returns? Oh, God, this is easy. If she tries to blackmail me, I'll throw her out a higher window. Oh, God. Meanwhile, I got bigger fish to fry. I was still doing it. Three, two, and Max one. Max Shrek. Max Shrek. Max Shrek. That yep. is correct. I couldn't remember Max, but I did put Shrek. Uh, we do need I don't the think first and last name of the character. Because there is a son in that movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and did you, did you know that Max Shrek was the name of the actor who played Nosferatu in the original Nosferatu film? I and knew that. that <laughs> is over. Thanks, <laughs> We've accomplished our mission and we Stay go back the vampire to the man who knows everything about cinema from 1915 on, Mark Andreco. <laughs> Until 1990. <laughs> Perfect. Next question, Mark. This All right. comes from the category of Star Wars, yeah. my favorite. Um, what substance can sustain a person in perfect hibernation? Well, okay. Perfect hibernation is a bit of a stretch, uh, but all the same. Jabba does like Han White really wants Four, three, two, Repeat the question. Oh, wow. Right. Ooh, that's really? one of your repeat the question. Okay, oh, repeat the question. What substance good, good, good. can sustain a person in perfect hibernation? All right. You know who hibernates well? Bears. That is one, five, You ever notice that? Three, two, and one. Carbonite. Down. Carbonite. 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 We go to Emma. Nicely uh, done. Carbonite? That's correct. Sweet, perfect Emma. so far. I Carbonite. I didn't have time to write it out, so it's Corbite. Corbite. We cannot I ran out of time to write. I mean, <laughs> Corbite. I think Corbite's a planet in the EU. Well, yeah, Corbite. 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 Worth one point in 2009's Star Trek. What color is the matter used to create the black hole that consumes planet Vulcan? All right, this is a strength for Inman. He's, he is done already. Uh, Emma's still riding here, and we have a uh, countdown coming here in five, four, three, red two, two, red. and one. <laughs> That is right. I, yellow. That is right. I, I said uh, green, which is opposite of red on the color. Just remember the big right. ball of red oh, that the needle went in. So Jason Inman gets the point. <laughs> that question brought to you by our good friends over at Crayola. Ken Napslock with the next question. All right, sixth question. This is in the category yes. of Lord of the Rings. What what form does the giant firework oh, okay. set off by Merry and Pippin take in Fellowship of the Ring? 
you know Fellowship of the Ring is a movie in the Lord of the Rings franchise. Yeah. I've been spelling it right. That's why I'm here. Five, four, Watch that tape, three, dragon. Dragon. Says my boy, that's about a dragon. It's possible a thousand years. I think it's a dragon. Dragon. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a small, dragon. actually. Yeah, 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 it's a dragon. Oh. Also known as Smaug. 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 You hear that, Makuga? <laughs> Smaug. All right, next question. All right, here we go. Uh, Mark Andreco stepping up to the plate, touching my computer. Sorry, sorry. Hope you washed your hands. There you go. Yeah, what is that picture? Whoa. Um, <laughs> my private life. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, this number qu question number seven comes from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In the Avengers, during Steve Rogers and Nick Fury's conversation at the gym, where did Steve say he should have left the Tesseract? All right. Destin, uh, I'd love to have a conversation with either one of those guys in a gym setting. That's when I'm most confident. I would love to have a conversation with I'm Chris sweaty. Evans in a gym. Five, the muscles are four, the gym, not the three, bad. two, Shower's and count. one. Pens are down. In the bottom of the Jason ocean. Inman. Bottom of the ocean. That's going to be correct. Yeah. At the bottom of the ocean. That wow. is correct. Wow. Close cave. Close cave. They got the yes. line exactly right. Very impressive work. We move on to your Wait, eighth question. Wait, did Jason actually get one, was, was he giving him? Wait. Yeah, 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 bottom of the ocean. These are the movies that are also in the Lord of the Rings franchise, just you not should have left good. it in the bottom of the ocean. In the desolation of Smaug, Call what back. region of Middle Earth do Bilbo and the dwarves encounter the giant spiders and the group of 11 what is that led called? by... Uh, the four, uh, group of elves, I believe you mean to say? We just, we just watched this, like... Uh, I'm not up on my I know, I was watching it with you guys. So, mm -hmm. I'm so sad I'm on my phone. I missed two already. Five, four, yeah. hurting me. three, two... Merkwood. One. Mirkwood uh, first. I put Mirkwood for Damn it. That is correct. Oh, hey. Hey. That's what I said as well. Hey. Oh, boy. Seven out of eight there. The <laughs> Even up there. Great job, Emma. Thanks, you too, yeah. Jason. We really knew that. It totally wasn't a guess. If Jason Whoa. was only married, I'd try and set these two up. Uh, well, there you Great go. go. Uh, number dating. nine. Number nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. This is the category of <laughs> DCEU. Oh, who played oh, Alfred in Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice? Oh, I know who played Alf in the hit TV show in the eighties. Not back in Scar himself. I would love to have an Alf category. Five, four, Jeremy Irons. Jeremy, Jeremy Irons. Irons. Jeremy Irons. Irons. Sexiest Hands voice alive. <laughs> Jason Inman. Jeremy Irons. That is correct. Jeremy Irons. That is correct. All right, Emma we have us a hot ball game here. Seven to six is the score right now. One more question in round one, and that will be administered by Mark, an Alf enthusiast, and Draco. This category is mixed bag. <laughs> Great. Hmm. Okay. Uh, in V for Vendetta, who played Cla now I know why you have me ask this question. Who played closeted uh, homosexual oh. and talk show host Gordon Dietrich? Oh god. Oh, what's his name? Show? Are you a talk show host? Emmy yeah. knows this because yeah. they're just talking about it on um, top ten. We're just talking on top ten, top ten show. And I forget. Five, four, three, two, Stephen Fry. One pen down, Emma Five. Uh, I was gonna write it was definitely someone, but uh, I cannot remember who. It's the guy oh, from uh, Hobbit <laughs> that plays the evil. Stephen Fry. That, that was right. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, wait, yeah. Mark. Answer, Did we tie? I, I, yeah, I missed two there. there yeah. Wow. Eight out of ten. Very match. I do. Mark. Victor and That's Draco nice, <laughs> predicted yeah. that Inman would win the entire match by two points. Missed the uh, Lord of the Rings and that uh, uh, for Vendetta. Move on yeah. round two. Uh, the great right. equalizer, the wheel. The wheel. How, and how are you feeling, Mark? Pressure on you asking these questions. Do you feel good here? Yeah, I've got, I'm getting a little tongue-tied because, yeah. you know, two good comedians, uh, two good announcers. Uh, I feel like I'm, you know, want to... Yeah. Hold up my end of the bar. I'll, yeah. I'll be on your talk show any day. <laughs> and we move on to round two, which is affectionately by some known as the wheel round. Each competitor is going to get a spin. Well, so far, Andrejko is, uh, let's look at his prediction, might be right. Two points. Up here <laughs> our answer Still a lot of games to be played, though. If there is. The answer, you can check for multiple choice, at which point the value of the question goes down to one. Keep in mind, competitors, there is stealing in round two. And if you don't like the category you spin at first, you are allowed one mulligan, which is golfing term for do-over. <laughs> Jason Inman, you are yes. currently in the lead. So oh God. would you like to have the first spin of the wheel, or would you like to defer to Miss Emma Fife? I would like Miss Emma to have first Oh, no opponent's oh, yeah. first yeah. choice. Fife's going to get a crack. Uh, I always say that there first spin, you put pressure on We're your We're looking opponent. for Harry Marble. Potter or the Marble. 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 I'm, I'm going to 
gonna spin again. She's gonna spin again. Come on. Give it a big spin. You gotta think. Spin is in. If you love your pot, you love the Lord of the Rings. Star Wars. Good. Star Wars. Spin to take Good. A shot. Star oh. Wars. Oh. <laughs> Emma Feist, as a matter of fact, hosts a show called Pencils and Parsecs. She knows a little bit about Star Wars. Right. And <laughs> you, because you're a huge Star Wars fan, will be administering the questions to Ray. Whoa. Skywars, excuse me, I read that wrong. Emma Feist. <laughs> All right, here you go. Emma, you get five questions. Remember, you do have you multiple tease. choice. If you want, question one in The Phantom Menace, Qui Gon Jin said there was a yeah. scene on what other <laughs> planet? Ooh. Give me the multiple choice. <laughs> All right. In Star Wars a, Pod Racer, it's a B, fun Alden, planet to race on. C, Malister, D, Hoth. I believe it is C, yeah, no, that, that That's happens. correct for a point. Yeah, yeah. Malister. <laughs> Pop your name for children in the 80s. All right. Question two. In Revenge of Commander the Sith, Cody. what is the name Cody, of the commander yeah. who was told to execute Order 66 against Obi-Wan Kenobi? Shoot him off the mountain. Or... Multiple choice. <laughs> A, Commander Gray, B, Commander Cody, C, Commander Stone, D, Commander Rex. I think it's A. Incorrect. Oh, nice. Uh, Commander Cody. That is right. Wow. That question was for you, Cody. I don't understand if you were to guess Commander <laughs> Rex, but... I right. guess myself. Execute order 66. All Commander right, Gray. Question. Okay. Out of five, in A New Hope, where was Luke planning to go to have R2-D2 memory erased? No. No, no not Icarus. No. Um. Um. Tossy. No, not Tossy. I'm drawing like. Right uh, give me the multiple four, choice. Uh, yeah. right. We have A. Moss Espa. B. Anchor. Okay, it was Anchor. C. Yeah, it was Anchor. Yeah. D. Moss Eisley. Yeah. Uh, Anchor Head. That is correct for yeah. points. <laughs> I mean, you gave myself two points there. Pretty much said it before you changed my mind. All right. <laughs> in question four, in Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Blue Squadron. Which Starfighter Squadron makes Blue. it through the Shield Gate to assist Rebels on the ground? Multiple choice. A. Red Squadron. B. Blue Squadron. C. Gold Squadron. D. Green Squadron. I think what? it's Red Squadron. Oh, Jason. <laughs> Is wow, it she's getting oh, swept. Blue. That's a huge deal by Jason Inman. That's a two-point swing, blue. and it's the second time in this match that colors yep. have felled Emma <laughs> Fight. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> General Merrick's Blue Squad. All right, fifth and final question. In Return of the Jedi, His how does decoration. Jabba refer to <laughs> yeah. frozen carbonite? I just said on this too. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. I don't. I'm multiple choice. Sorry. Oh! No apologies needed. A. Most prized possession. B. Favorite decoration. C. Best That's hard party. because A o and B most could be both correct possession. technically. Because I think he says both. But the actual quote uh, is, is I'm not bringing up my answers? favorite decoration. Sure, we'll favorite decoration. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, but I feel like he says most prized possession. Most prized possession. B, favorite decoration. He, I don't C, think he says bounty. most prized possession. B, most cherished Does he know? possession. I, think he I don't think so either. It's okay. yeah. Yeah. a big point. Okay. Because right. Jason Evans looks though. like he knew that answer, but now Ooh. Emma Fife closes the gap to just Jason one. Jason could knock her out. And now it is Mr. Inman's yeah. spin at the wheel. He He's start. been eyeing it yeah. as he would a lady on a dance floor. And he gets <laughs> 10 The man can cut points. a rug, Ken. Yeah. They Done. call it the Inman Boogie back where he's from. Uh, he has boogied his way DC. into the a category Marvel. of Marvel. Marvel movies. Jason Inman, it's, a collector of spinning. comic books. It is. Comic book booklets here, but uh, he's also the host of, uh, you know, DC All Access. Ooh, he's could this be a in his background. company decision? All right, oh, decision here, but... let's do it. All right, oh. Marvel is taking that chance. up for a fight. <laughs> this is Marvel. These are Marvel, so this could be anything that has ever been Marvel film related. Mark Andrews. Okay, question number one. You ready, Jason? Yep. Who played Bobby Drake, also oh, known as Iceman, um, in X Men, X Two, and X Men: The Last oh, Stand? Yeah. It's that guy with the blonde hair. I forget what his name is. That is correct. <laughs> oh, shit. Holy crap! Yeah. Who this, knows that? This he is gonna be over points. quickly. <laughs> yeah. Three point lead. I'm hyped to it as well. All right. Your next question. In Blade Two. What is the name of the elite vampire squad that Blade reluctantly teams up with? I, I need the multiple choice for this one. I can give you that for one point. Is it A, the Night Stalkers, B, the Reapers, C, the Blood, Blood Pack, Pack, or Blood D, Pack. the Slayers? The Blood Pack. They all sound like great metal names, but that is the correct one. One point goes, goes Jason Inman's way. He now has a four-point Lucky. <laughs>
Question number three. In 2005's Fantastic Four, Ben Grimm, ben Grimm has developed feelings for blind artist Alicia Masters. Who plays Alicia? <sighs> Who remembers anything from that movie? Multiple choice. <laughs> A, Jada Pinkett Smith. B, Taraji Carrie P. Henson. Washington. C, Carrie Washington. D, Janelle Monae Robinson. C. That is correct. correct. Oh, yeah. oh, boy. <laughs> Inman, a confident, partial guess there. Your next question. In Logan, $10, how much money is paid to Logan to take Laura to North Dakota? No, I think it's 25 I think I know this, but I don't want to give her the points. Multiple choice. Is it A, $20,000, B, $60,000, okay, C, $80,000, or D, $100,000? Is it 20? It in fact we were both wrong there, Mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was closer, though. You for your trouble. You were. Now yes, 15 to 9. Yes, so politely. Like, it was very nice. Very, <laughs> very good manners here by both competitors. Your fifth and final question. In 2004, Spider-Man 2, what job yeah. does Peter get fired from because he's always late? <laughs> Pizza delivery. Yeah. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> Two points for Jason Inman. <laughs> wow. And th that is what you expect from an Inman getting a category that maybe some of his fans weren't sure how he was going to do, but okay. he seemed confident in Marvel, and the decision to keep that wheel red really paid off. Yeah, absolutely. Could easily a, be uh, TKO, though. Lead, but it's not impossible for Emma. She uh, has some pressure on her here, but those numbers could sink Jason just as much as they could elevate her. This this is still anyone's game going into that. We have seen crazier things happen in a round three, especially when this it comes is gonna to This is going to be an intense round Mark three. Andreco, your read yeah. of the match so far. Um, it, it would be fun. It would be fun if she comes back and makes it close. <laughs> she it would. would she, does, she does need to avoid the TKO. <laughs> yeah. TKO is yeah. possible here, but like I said, those numbers are where your fate lies. And those numbers are what we are going to receive from our competitors right now in round three. You're going to get three questions. Those are valued at two points, and then three points, and then if we get that far, five points. They're all from different movie categories, and that is why we need your three numbers. So, Jason Inman. If you can go ahead and give us a number, three numbers that range from 1 to 17. I want 17, okay. 0, 1, gotcha. 9. To celebrate the Enterprise coming back in 2009. He still did it. Even without Scott Mance, he still did it. <laughs> All right. We have right. 17, 0, 1, and 9. And now, Emma Fife, your favorite numerals. I will take three, uh, six, and 15. Those are all legal <laughs> integers, and we are ready to go. Ken Knapsack will be administering the questions to Emma Fife, and like Ken said, Andrego, we are at risk of a technical knockout right now. Emma Fife has some work in front of her. Yeah, absolutely. Emma, you chose number three. I just want to confirm, right? Yes. Good, because oh, that's Harry man, Potter. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Whoa, it's right. a shame it's only worth two points. <laughs> Two-point question. Who? Two-point question. Hagrid gave Pig. Dudley Dursley Pig. the tale of what animal in Sorcerer's Stone? Hmm. Oh. A dog? <laughs> That's incorrect. Uh, I don't remember. Incorrect. We were looking for pig. Oh, for that's pig. right. Oh, God. Uh, I can picture it now. That's All right. Pig well, she definitely needs <laughs> nice, clever this joke next there, one Mark, to avoid the TKO, it. and you chose the number six number six that category is Ooh. who said it oh boy <laughs> who said it three point Ooh. question Gimli. who said certainty of death small chance of success <laughs> great line by gimli too yeah gimli. Mm. oh no did gimli just destroy emma gimli just destroyed emma yeah <laughs> can you repeat the question oh, oh no who said certainty of death Small chance of success. You don't even get what to know what category. I'll go with K2SO. Oh, oh no. Oh. Alan Tudyk. Jason, wow. I'm not two for two right now. <laughs> wow. To be fair, if Emma was here for our uh, Lord of the Rings watch along, she would have known that. <laughs> <laughs> Way around this entire match, and then Emma Fife 
you just, you gotta know it's a pig's tail because they're very famous for those curly little tails That's they have. That's right. Hey, look, all hats off to That they are. She came in the ring, and sometimes it's those numbers. And even then, when you get a category that you know, uh, I'm a Star Wars fan, I, I could struggle on a question that I thought I would know. And and that was a, that was a deep cut with Hagrid and the tail. So it's what are you going to do? Certainly. And, and Frank, I mean, if anybody has any question about Emma Fire's mm, overall mm, inner geekdom mm. knowledge, look this at what she was, easy was able to do like, along with Jason Inman in the first round. There were points flying yeah. everywhere. You just get stuck talk with about a, a difficult category. Yeah. <laughs> round two, and that might make discussion. break you. Yeah, no, it, it was, you know, it, these questions, these were tough questions, all these questions in this final round. I was, these felt, all felt like five planners to me, but that's why I'm not competing in inner geekdom. Well, you're not <laughs> in inner geekdom. All right, we are going to go, though, Mark, backstage right now to Jen Sturger, who was with both the winner and the loser. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? I'm Jen Sturger here with Mr. Inman. That was a fantastic match. Thank you so much. you got to be feeling pretty stoked. I feel really good. I, I feel good that I, I didn't go out there. I didn't stumble. Um, I took a Marvel category that people were probably surprised that a DC guy took. But you know what? This is one step closer to that four-way. I've been wanting that belt for over a year. And, Jen, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be mine. You took your time in that second mm -hmm. round. You know, you didn't just, chance. like you said before, you didn't jump to conclusions. Mm -hmm. or, and you, you, you definitely went for the multiple choice yes. when you had to. Yeah. What, what was your strategy doing that? My strategy at that point was I just wanted to keep the lead. Mm -hmm. I was so worried that if I went for an answer that I would give Emma two points. So I knew that I just had to let them say the word, and, and as soon as I'd hear it. And she's a dangerous she's competitor. A her, yeah. Marvel is a strength of hers. I knew that if I gave her the chance to steal it from me, she would, and I didn't want to give her that shot. So going into that third round, though, you had to be feeling pretty confident. I did. I, I did until they said Harry Potter. And as soon as they said Harry Potter, I was like, oh, she's, mm. I'm going to have to fight for this. I'm going to have to fight for this. And again, at the, everybody might have discounted Emma out at the third round, but I didn't. I was so worried because she is so buried in all her knowledge. She's just like me in the same uh, inner geekdom. A that, good all around. Yeah, she's all around. She knows a little bit of everything. So even with that lead, I wasn't confident. Now, we're throwing you right back into the fire later this week. God. Man, when am I going to have time for all this stuff, guys? So now, <laughs> because you've won this match, you get to compete in the four-way like yeah. you spoke of. And that's against Washington, Coy, mm -hmm. the Crusher. Yes. I mean, how are you feeling going into Friday? I feel pretty good because I trained a lot to come into this match. I watched a lot of movies. A lot of montages. Uh, a lot of montages. Uh, memorized a lot of starships for no reason. That's just usually what I do in my hobby. Uh, I, but it happened to work for this one. So, uh, <laughs> But, you know, I have one person that I'm really scared of. Really? Who's that? The Crusher. <laughs> Rachel Crusher Cushing. I'm very scared of her. The other competitors, um, I think they're they're kind of like me. They're 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 varied. It's gonna be all around luck, but Rachel is a machine. And if she hits one of her favorites <laughs> on that wheel, we're all dead. I, I agree with you on that oh one. Man. But what's it gonna feel like to be champ for you? Uh, it's going to feel like destiny. Oh, that's enough said. <laughs> Can't argue with that. We'll see you Friday. Yeah, I see you. And I'm not going to lie, this is a little weird. I, you know, I feel a lot more at home here than I do out at the table there. Like, this feels a lot more natural. Yeah. I think that's what it is. It's like, if I could just have a mic in my hand at the table, like, I'd feel more in my element and, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe I'd do uh, better. Maybe <laughs> we work that out for you next time. Perfect, yeah, it's perfect. Definitely I like a little that. weird. Like interviewer that. on interviewer. It's pretty cool. Um, that was that was a little that was a little disappointing. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm I'm disappointed uh, in my performance, but you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, let's keep it real though. Like you were in it. Yeah, I, I did pretty well in round one. I was only a couple points down from Jason Inman, so I felt pretty good going into round two. And then, you know, Star Wars is definitely a strong category for me. But at this point, we've had whole schmodowns. We are oh, running out of Star Wars. Yeah, questions. exactly. We are running out of Star Wars questions to ask. No. So the level of Star Wars question, unless it's a round one question, which usually the round one questions encompass more of like a general kind of knowledge and carbonite <laughs> question. But like in round two, the questions start getting a lot more specific. And again, it's like we've had whole schmodowns full of Star Wars and there's a whole lot of Star Wars. So it's like, even if my knowledge in say one particular area is particularly strong, it's not necessarily gonna translate to be all across the board. Is that why you're kind of upset right now? A little bit. Oh. It's you. okay. <laughs> oh, Emma, we all love you. And and look, that just goes to show you that even when you hit something on the wheel that is your strength, 
like the questions are completely unpredictable. Yeah. We've seen people that are like, I'm musicals, I'm dance movies, I'm I mean, action movies. Can we talk and about the number killed. of times that team action has landed on action and had to go multiple choice for basically every answer? Mean to interrupt this interview, but good comment. You're fantastic. You are a champion in your own right, and you helped build this Shimoda. So I thank you Thanks. for a great match. Aww. Aww. <laughs> you guys are gonna make me cry. I didn't wear waterproof mascara. <laughs> but Emma, we're gonna see you back here again here yeah, soon. Yeah, I hope so. I don't know. I might just stick to this. I think. I'm no, <laughs> never. We will not let that happen. <laughs> Women need to be represented in that geek right. world as much as possible. So we'll see you again soon. All right. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> Love you, girl. Well, you see it there. I mean, they're handling both the winner and the loser with the grace and, and class and competitive yeah. fun spirit that they had in the pre-interview and that we saw throughout this match here. Jason Inman will be moving on to the Fatal 4-Way, which we remind you airs in just a few days here. So, Mark Andreco, I'm going to give you your Koi Janru, your Jay Washington. I will give you now your Jason Inman. And who else? Rachel Cushing. Yeah. And I, and Rachel Cushing in this match. This who do you like oh. coming up in the fatal once a, four way? Once again, the wheel this is insane. The, the wheel this is absolutely is the insane. Yeah, I think, I think. Um, that was so a good like match. No, no. no sure. I, I, th I think, I think Rachel <laughs> yeah. or Jason mm -hmm. would be my would be neck and neck for me. But once again, as we see here, if the wheel isn't in your favor, you can have a commanding lead and then just go down in flames. Yeah. But if everything being equal, I think it's between Rachel and Jason to go to, up against Hector. Uh, Ken Napsok, when we look at the future of Emma Fife and the Inner Geekdom, I still think that it is bright. I think that there's some yep. storm cloud. You got to get over that that first hurdle of getting a solid W in an Inner Geekdom match. But she has all the game in the world to yep. do just that going forward. Absolutely. I really hope she continues here. Uh, it's just two losses. We've seen anything can happen. You can come back from that. Look at, look at the year JT he had a couple years ago. Now he's on top of the world. So you know, Mark, as good as anyone, you could turn your fortunes around. That's right. And you guys can turn your fortunes around if you are not already on the Facebook fan page movie trivia showdown request to be a member they will approve you keep it Corey's in there joke and have some fun. cover also photo is in that screenshot the showdown <laughs> time it's a showdown <laughs> rundown it's a great podcast That's on itunes logo. go ahead and download the latest episode it of looks that like the showdown logo Frank, now aaron and brian do a great job give me the pre-game and post-game stats and stories That's up, boys. and analysis mark thanks so much for joining us thanks today. for having me yeah this was fun it is inner geekdom time between Jason and Very Inman interesting and transition Fight. there. The winner they might have transitioned Friday's into Bakuga and <laughs> Hey everyone, Frank Janish from the Rundown with your stat breakdown and let's just dive right into the numbers for today's match. Starting with Emma Fife. She started off pretty strong going 6 of 10 in round 1, but after that, she faltered for the rest of the match ended up going 9 of 17 for a 53% correct. Now this match further exposed Emma's deficiencies, especially when it comes to the major comic book franchises. Between all things DC and Marvel, she is a combined Ouch. 5 of 23. Now moving over to today's winner, Jason Inman, he was strong throughout the entire match, answering 15 of 17 88, for 88% correct. Jeez. He continued to be extremely dominant concerning all things comic book related with a combined accuracy rate of 83%, as well as being strong in Star Wars. After today's match, it brought his lifetime accuracy to 78%, which puts him at third best behind Rachel Cushing and Hector Navarro. Not He's bad. done this by only answering two <sighs> Star Trek questions, which we all know is his major area of expertise. And for more stats and info, There's go a name missing from that list on Twitter, as well as the Schmodown <laughs> Rundown podcast every week on the SK Plus YouTube channel, as well as on the Schmoes No podcast feed on iTunes. And this has been your post-match Schmodown breakdown. There's going to be an ad. Let's watch this ad, yo. Oh my it's, probably, gosh, yeah, well, it's been a while since I've seen this. Here. Well, hello. Outlaw? Don't give me that hello outlaw crap. You've been ducking me for far too long, right? <laughs> oh, ducking you? Hardly, dude. I'll take you on Schmodown any day of the week. Any time. Any day, any time? Any day, any time, Roka. Just like last time. Uh, well, why don't you put your money where your mouth is? I owe you for that one. Oh, yeah. You want a Schmodown? Oh, I want a Schmodown right now. Oh, you want a Schmodown right I, now? I want a Schmodown right now, Riley. Well, then draw.
I mean, as much as I love the seed, I'm glad it's only on once to throw down there, not twice. These do take movie trivia seriously. You should take the fans into consideration. Y'all have been begging for your shot at the movie trivia schmodown, and now you get your opportunity. We are proud to introduce the movie trivia schmodown app. <laughs> Still funny. Fans Which will be able to fixed. play all trivia modes and compete against your favorite I'm competitors, so join a league, waiting. or play a friend really one -on -one. Yeah. After you accrue enough yeah. points, you can unlock the inner geekdom division and, and play yes, I'd love to take on the Android. <laughs> Both on the Find app and real all life. over the world, <laughs> climb up the rankings, deem a champion, challenge a champion, but make sure you've earned it. I mean, eventually we can so beat the Android on the Android. Mark better be in the promo video for this for one. <laughs> but when it goes to Android. I totally <laughs> knew that. How'd you miss that? It's for everybody. Make sure you guys download it right now on iTunes. Maybe that's why he was a guest host. They're hinting at the Android coming soon. <laughs> and make sure you request to join the movie trivia Facebook page. And then one day, maybe you can challenge the likes of Aroka, O'Reilly, maybe even your old pal, Baby Carrots. I'll be your yeah, Huckleberry. Huckleberry. It's showdown time. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so I'd like to make something clear here. Mm -hmm. Jason Inman, I owe you an apology. Because when the season, when this particular season started, I had a lot of doubts about how far I thought you would actually get in your geekdom. I thought you would be a person of, you know, talking smack and not really showing it but you know what i was proven wrong now granted i can't necessarily put my foot in my mouth yet or i'm sorry i'm gonna put my foot in my mouth one more time because you're going up against rachel in the four-way <laughs> but that being said this was actually still a this was still a pretty good match a little one-sided yes but i think this is this is the match that could lead us to some interesting results at the end of the week. Mark, thoughts on the match, man? Oh, like I was, I, I knew it was a match. Jason Emmons saw uh, time to sign, and he did. He proved that he needed this, that he should be in the inner geekdom and killing it. I, when it comes down to the four way, I think it will be down to Rachel or Emmons. Just like you never know what kind of teaming up. In the second round with the steals or how, however that could work, you, you you've got like three different. You'll have three different opportunities to steal points in the round two. So we'll see how that factors into it. All right, Malcolm. Yeah, I mean, like I I've been had, I had the feeling Jason was win, but I mean, like Emma did put up a good fight. And it's clear she doesn't know as much about Star Wars as everyone else. And I mean, like, for the four way, I think, um, like, us crush sets sit together, I think Rachel's got this. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, and Clark, well, I'm, what, what, were your, what were your final thoughts? Well, I guess I was right. But other than that, this match, like, I think we can all say it wasn't the greatest match ever, but I mean, it wasn't entertaining. It was great. It was, I mean, it wasn't not entertaining. It was great. It was fun. <laughs> um, I know that, um, this is probably one of Emma's weaker matches, but I mean, was this was this her first one on one match singles? I yes. think it was. Oh, yeah. No, I think, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, I know, but in, I mean, in a singles match, yeah. and I feel like when we get to see her more, which we will, we're going to see her in the future. She's just going to get better, and she's going to she might be the comeback player of the year next year for all we know. This might yeah, have just been a a first first round slump. But uh, yeah, this I, I mean, has a lot of potential. Jason Inman deserved this. He rocked it this match. It was a great match. I can't wait to get into it and delve into it on Sunday in the Summit. It's gonna, it was a great match. Yeah, definitely. I, um, if, if I'm around for the Summit, I will happily give my thoughts on it as well. Because, you know, he, here's the thing. Like I just said about Jason, the dude has some determination now. The dude has drive. You know, after how he fared in the singles tournament and how Team Trek um, just got screwed in 
there in their match against team action. Um, you know, the dude's got the dude. The dude had, wants to prove something. He wants to prove he belongs in this in this league, and he might get his chance now. Finally, so time will tell. And I want Emma to come back. I really do. I genuinely want her to not just be the person who does, you know, does honestly great interviews, but I want her to come back as a competitor because I think we just haven't seen what she can do yet. There is more to her, and I I think we'll get that chance. I, I don't know when, but I hope between now and the end of next season we get to – we get we we can see that Emma has a lot more to prove, but guys, that ought to about do it. And um, thank you for watching this reaction. We truly appreciate. It. Please like, comment, and subscribe to Take Three Productions. Mark, our special guest. Where can the good folks find you online? You can always find me on Facebook at uh, My Movie Trivia League. That we've joined up with Take Three Full Metal Trivia. Look us up on Facebook. Check us out on YouTube. And have some fun. Malcolm, where the good folks find you? Um, I'm all over all, all, all the many different trivia leagues. Um, I'm in the team tournament coming up for BLB Trivia in the same bracket as Chris. Um, and I'm looking after the Fan Reaction League as well. So. All right, Chris Clark, mm -hmm. where can the good folks find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at my band Last Shot Redemption at LSAR Band and Men. You guys can follow Take Three Productions on Twitter and Instagram at Take Three Trivia. You can find me on Stardust at Chris Take Three, and you can find me hosting our Star Wars show, Knights of the Podcast. It is back. It comes back on this Thursday, November twenty third. Guys, make sure you watch it. For Malcolm Lay, Mark Borick, and Chris Clark. I'm Chris Doman. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.